in our education model history was not taught in a better way mm -hmm. so students were aware of the stories of history but the facts were missing yeah so now when we look at upsc journey and history as a subject there facts play a very important role with concepts mm -hmm. so there is a general psychosis among students that it's a very tough subject which is Jack. see uh, in my past 16 years of teaching experience 97 percentage of my students were non history background students mm. uh, from my childhood days i was always fascinated with history because okay. i come from a historical city okay. hello everyone my name is nikita and welcome to an academy aaj jo hamari how to choose optional podcast series mein jo educator aa rahi hain she has been teaching for more than 15 years bahut sare topics ko guidance de chuki hai aur aaj aapko guidance dene aa rahi hain so i would like to welcome Kirtika ma'am. Hello ma'am. Yeah. Welcome to the podcast. Please have a seat. Hi ma'am. Uh history. Very fascinating, very deep subject and uh, you know uh, now we love history as an adult but as an as a child I usually you know uh, I always used to uh, you know I always used to fear. see yeah fear of history and always used to think that you know history is a boring subject but now it is it has become fascinating and all so what uh, what has like why you like the subject and what makes you uh, you know dive into history yeah so hi nikita yeah ma'am so history is a subject when you look into it it's a very interesting subject number 1 number 2 the general perception is it's lengthy in our education model history was not taught in a better way mm -hmm. so students were aware of the stories of history but the facts were missing yeah so now when we look at upsc journey and history as a subject there facts play a very important role with concepts mm -hmm. so there is a general psychosis among students that it's a very tough subject which is not I mean, uh, also, ma'am, uh, there are a lot of things that we have to remember. Mm. The you know the year, the date, mm. and I personally, you know, got we get very confused, and uh, and I also get challenged in you know remembering. Mm. So, how to remember all the all those facts, dates, and everything that important incidents? See, history, as I told you, we divide history into four parts. Mm -hmm. So, ancient, medieval, modern, world. so there we link art and culture plus post independence okay so when you want to learn the history of a particular country years mm. play a very important role but being a historian mm -hmm. and academician we would learn all the years mm -hmm. but students who are opting history they might and should learn only particular years mm. say for example we have the first battle of panipat so the year 1526 will do Mm. so it's not necessary that you should remember 21st april 1526 not at all mm. so but some battles you know they are decisive mm. they actually change the course of history so those years do play a very important role and generally as a teacher we have some tricks mm. so i do teach them to students to just remember that and history is not a subject where you mug up mm. because mugging up is not a right way to study history we memorize so the interesting part comes with conceptual clarity with memorizing the mm. part and mm. studying it together it becomes like a package so uh, ma'am what makes you closer to the subject and what interests you most in the subject uh, from my childhood days i was always fascinated with history because okay. i come from a historical city okay so looking at the temples looking at the culture mm. the way my city was taught to me in my school days i was fascinated mm. and i have an academic background of history so that naturally gave me more interest to choose history mm. but when i entered into this field as mm. a teacher then i saw why should i not give it to my students as well mm. so the interest in me i started sharing it to my students and it's it's like we compensate each other wow so ma'am optional is also very uh, important part of upsc preparation so why and how much important is it it is uh, in the in the preparation the optional optionals play a very important role because uh, 500 marks is actually given to optional but when you look at history again the pitching point here is it's a factual subject and as i told you 
there are limited sources to study mm -hmm. and who's not fascinated with a story. Mm -hmm. See, from childhood, we've been hearing bedtime stories, small stories, you know, moral stories. So it's a sto subject with stories, plus we add some events, plus we add some facts, and it's all together. Mm -hmm. So when students understand the reality of the subject, the subject is complete. And Apart from it, the skill of answer writing plays a very important role in history because uh, facts not to be given exactly as it is. The question would be in a different format and the answer writing skills play a very important role. So that is what makes a difference particularly in history. So here, uh, when a student joins history optional, mm. I would teach them that all. Okay. So that makes the subject even more scoring. So ma'am, uh, how to analyze that one is in, one should choose history? Like for example, if I talk about myself, I was not good in history and, but as I said, it interests me now. Mm. So if I would want to choose history, so mm. what are the key points or the checklist, I would say, uh, to evaluate in myself and choose a subject? The first focal point is interest. Mm. If a student is interested in history, but let's keep it like uh, they have a different academic background. Or if, if not that good, like I mm. said myself, yeah, uh, yeah. was not in the yeah. subject. See, uh, in my past 16 years of teaching experience, 97% of my students were non-history background students. Mm. So the pitching point here is interest. If you are interested and if you love the subject, mm -hmm. if you want to know uh, the subject in a detailed, chronological, structured mm -hmm. way, history would be your cup of tea. Yeah. So interest plays a very important role. And number two, the books to study. Mm -hmm. Because the market is filled with plenty of books. And a student would be misguided of what to study, what not to study. Mm -hmm. So there comes the role of a teacher. Mm -hmm. So where we give the notes, we structure it in a format, because uh, UPSC writing is not exactly an academic writing. It requires a different skill, mm. which is done in the classroom. Okay. So that is also a pitching point here. Also, ma'am, the syllabus is very vast. So how much time it takes to cover the subject? Uh, the syllabus is, of course, it looks lengthy. Okay. But uh, to put it in a nutshell, it takes six to seven months to complete the optional. Uh, because uh, if you look at the UPSC syllabus of history, each and every topic is uh, determined in a nice format. Mm. So we do not move even an inch out of the syllabus. Let me give you an example. Uh, let me take a, a, a topic called Indus Valley Civilization. Mm -hmm. So the syllabus of UPSC says nature, character, mm. features, mm. survival, continuity, mm. uh, decline. So if a student covers these area, the topic Indus Valley Civilization is over. Mm. So that's it. So you, you will not expect even an extra question out of the topic. So it's precise. Mm. So that a should, student should understand. And uh, history generally, you know, there are lots of misconceptions. So this is actually there, which is, which is untrue. What, what, are the, uh, what are other misconceptions? Uh, misconception is, number one, as you said, it's lengthy. Uh -huh. Number two, it's boring, which is not. <laughs> number three, it's not scoring, because we see toppers coming up now. Yeah. We have toppers coming up in so history So what is the optional. score of the subject? How scoring it is? It is like students have take, uh, got 303, mm -hmm. 313. So my student got 297, okay. 262. Can you so, name some of these Yeah, students? Rahul Bhatt. Okay. So my student who got All India Rank ah. 68. Mm. So Anukriti, Krishna Prasad. So mm. there are many students who have cleared it with history options. So what was their strategy? Like uh, of, of optional subjects? Nah, optional, it's like your dedication, mm. your interest, your discipline. You should have discipline. Mm. Because the subject, this it's an intensive learning. Six months, you, need, you dedicate yourself to a subject mm. and you write answers. The biggest... Mm. Pitching point is answer writing. See, anyone could learn history because it's a very interesting subject. Mm. You speak about Akbar, people would get fascinated. You mm -hmm. speak about Gandhi, people would love. But how to write Gandhi in the exam is the catching point. Mm. So the ultimate aim of uh, a teacher is to make them write. So um, does the subject overlap uh, the GS also and what are the topics? Yeah, history optional exactly overlaps the GS. Okay. 
So in general studies, we have six topics, if I would uh, make it clear, ancient Indian history, mm -hmm. medieval, art and culture, mm -hmm. modern, post-independence and world history. So okay. there are six topics. Mm -hmm. But an optional, when you pick it up, we have two paper. Paper one covers mm -hmm. ancient and medieval, mm -hmm. paper two covers modern and world. So mm -hmm. in a way, it's an exact replica of GS. Wow. So it's definitely overlapping. And the topics are like, you teach Akbar in GS mm. and the same Akbar is taught in optional. So the depth is little bit extra. Okay. So um, uh, how many, for how many years you have been uh, teaching this? So this is my 16th year of oh teaching. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so much. So uh, in these many years, so you have been teaching so many uh, students, you have been guiding uh, so many students. So what are the common mistakes that a lot of students do uh, in this subject? Um, as a teacher, what I see is the first one, as I told you before, discipline. Mm. Uh, in this exam, particularly, the first thing, you need to have lots of patience. Mm. The second one, you should have good stamina. Stamina mm. plays a very important role. And the third one, they should be very positive. This is what mm. I generally tell my students. Be disciplined, have a good stamina, the energy level should be high. Mm. And the third thing, you should be like, you know, you should be punctual, you should mm. be patient. And it's a one-year program. The entire UPSC design is a mm. year program. So for this, you should meticulously plan and make a timetable of how are you going to go. Mm. But students, what I've seen is, number one, they don't study regularly. Mm. The second thing, they don't revise. Mm. The third one, they don't write answers. Mm. Answer writing plays a very important role in this exam. Mm. See, you can remember a fact, you can talk about it, mm. You can, you know, you can speak, you can share mm. stories, but ultimately this exam is all about marks. Mm. So many of my students are headstrong with concepts, but they're not able to write. So yeah. that doesn't serve the purpose. So um, if a person uh, chooses uh, history as an optional and it, is in, it interests them and somehow in few months, if they find it boring, mm. so what what the factors which makes them boring and why they're finding the subject after few months boring and uh, how to get out of that? Uh, honestly, the subject would never be boring. <laughs> if they get into the boring mode, it might have been some, some issues pertaining to a student. Hmm. Because the subjects, once you start, because hmm. I start with ancient, medieval, modern and world history. So the moment you start, the subject is like chronologically tied up. Hmm. So you will not be able to cut topics in between. Hmm. It's not like I teach Akbar today. Tomorrow I teach Gandhi, mm. then I teach Hitler. No, not at all. So you go in a chronological pattern. So automatically the subject will give you curiosity. So the yeah. subject never bores. Maybe multiple other external factors might bore a student. Yeah, this actually this one is my next question when you say curiosity that and this is actually true. When we, especially it happened uh, many times with me as well. So when I read something about history, so it fascinates me a lot and I uh, become so much cu curious and I read a lot more mm. about that. I get very deep into the topic. And But for me, uh, when I'm not preparing for the UPSC, it's fine. But if somebody who is preparing for the UPSC exam, the time is very crucial and the time mm. is very important. So uh, how to be maintained while studying a particular mm. topic, not to get so much deep into mm. unnecessary because that's not important sometimes it is not important true, true. so uh, what do you want to say about that how you uh, what do you uh, guide on this generally i tell this to all my students the first thing is a student would not know what to study and what not to study hmm. because as i say say for example there are many uh, interesting characters in history again like if i take it like you know chandragupta maurya hmm. again chanakya so when, we, when I teach uh, Gupta, Samudra Gupta or Harsha, mm. people would want to know more. Mm. I clearly tell my students, Guptas are for 20 mark. I would teach you for 20 mark. Mm. Let's not go into the other detailing, which is mm. not required. Mm. I teach Bajirao, mm. the Peshwa. They wanted to know about Mastani. Mm. Mastani is not there in the syllabus. Yeah. So why? Uh. So folklore is to be kept aside. So we need to particularly focus on what is required, the purpose to be known. Mm. Students, when they start preparing, they come motivated. Mm. But in between, somehow, you know, they get messed up with some external factors and they get deviated. Mm. So there comes the role of a teacher. Mm. 
So we guide them, we tell them this is the syllabus, mm. do not go off track, do not get yourself deviated, this is unnecessary. Mm. So we come into the picture there. Okay. So ma'am, uh, what is the most, like you have come across many uh, students and many, so what is, who, like you must have come across a few or one or two students who actually, uh, you know, made you like made you proud like uh, every topper may have must have made you proud but Definitely. can you uh, you know can you give me any incident that uh, in the classroom or uh, no, somewhere no it's like uh, yeah. now i have students almost in 19 states so whenever they call me okay. I, i'm in touch with all of them so during teachers day or some festivals they do wish me or if there's some mm. say for example there was an earthquake my student called me mm. and said ma'am are you fine mm. So, or they visit some places, they do remember me. Oh, that's so sweet. So, they are in touch and uh, uh, my student Rahul Bhatt, he happened to visit Ajanta Caves. Mm. So, he just gave me a call and he said, ma'am, what all you taught, I'm able to see in front oh of my, my eyes. That's so sweet. That, that's nice. So, uh. my another student, you know, he was uh, visiting the Bimbetka Cave painting. Mm -hmm. So, he pinged me up telling that, ma'am, I could see, mm -hmm. I could hear your voice. Mm -hmm. So I'm hearing your voice and I could see what all you spoke, mm. I'm seeing it in live. Wow. So these are some memorable things and uh, many of my students, uh, they are posted in my hometown. Mm. So I'm in touch with them. So they sp started speaking my mother tongue. Mm -hmm. So they call me and they share some nice experiences. <laughs> so see that's a student-teacher relationship, it's for life. That's amazing, yeah. Uh, it's, 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 it's said, you know, like the Gurukula pattern, uh -huh. the Guru Shishya Parampara continues. So I'm really like very much you know happy that I'm a teacher because this is the only field where you always stay young mm. because you talk to students you yeah. be with them you guide them you nurture them you you know and they make you proud they win you win we win so that success is collective of course that's so beautiful so ma'am now a new program is coming uh, for optional uh, in an academy History optional, so what will be given uh, to students in this program? Can you elaborate? Yeah. yeah. So the syllabus would be meticulously covered. Uh, the students would have my class notes. So mm. I do dictate and I do give some running notes. So that would be exactly according to the syllabus format. Mm. Then uh, after each session or weekly ones, we would have a map practice session because we have a particular uh, map work. So, mm. which is for 50 marks. Mm. So, I teach them in class. Mm. So, according to the requirement, we go about with that. I make mm. them to draw. I make them to locate places. Mm. I teach them how to locate it. Then, I give them the points of that particular place because these places are not new. Mm. They would be ancient sites which we might have been unheard of. Mm. So, that is all with the classroom program. And I am a believer of answer writing. So, I give... Uh, home assignments, I give them uh, some hypothetical questions to just uh, make them to break the box and just uh, write an answer so that it looks different. Mm. And uh, after each uh, se section is over, I give them tests. Okay. So that is a classroom program. Then once the course is over, they'll be having mm. full length test. So there is a test program also. So I think this all, if they take it, and they uh, diligently work on it, they'll become a topper. <laughs> That's amazing. Hopefully, yeah. yeah. We hope that. Uh, so, thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, uh, you have guided again uh, to choose the optional, and uh, I'm sure that this is going to help a lot of aspirants. Mm. So, thank you, and we are looking forward uh, for the program, the yeah. upcoming program. Yeah. Thank you thank so you, much, ma'am. Thank you, Nikita. Thank you.